Hello, I am Wanderer001, and this is my revisitation of Prime Video, what used to be known as Amazon Prime Instant Video. I did a review of this back in 2014, so it's been several years since I've last done a revisitation of Amazon Prime. And back then, my recommendation was pretty much don't use it unless you're getting it as part of your Prime bundle, because, well, the offerings they had at the time, not great. They didn't have any originals and they were really not anywhere up to snuff compared to Netflix or even free Hulu at that time. But here we are in 2020 and we're all spending a lot more time in our houses, so what better time to take a look and see if Prime Video is something that you should be paying for. In my case, it is part of my Prime subscription, which as of now is like $120 a month depending on where you live. So I still say as a primary video service not quite up to snuff however as an extra for free shipping access to the kindle loan library and amazon music it's it has improved vastly so let's go take a look we are going to check this out on my roku here and i'm just going to let the load times go so you get an idea of what you're what you can expect all right you should see the first thing that has vastly changed with amazon prime Finally, they have caught up with everybody else and now offer profiles. So each person in your household can have their own profile. So here I have mine, my wife, and notice a designated kids profile. When selecting a new profile, you can determine, you know, give it a name, but you can select right here, if I come across, that it is a kids profile and that TV shows and movies for 12 and under. Now I'm going to go back. To my main page here just so you can see if i come down and let's say want to edit my wife's profile you can come in here and you can change the name or all the way down at the bottom select remove i will admit the navigation on this screen is a little janky because i can't just press up on the roku remote to go up to save to changing my profile name i have to go all the way over here and then go it's just it's a little clunky but i am happy that it is here because they have finally caught up to let's be honest everybody else i'm going to go under my main profile here which is pretty much a hodgepodge of both my stuff and my wife's stuff because well originally that's what we had to work with what you're looking at right here is the landing page you will notice at the top right here highlighted now in yellow a giant ad banner this will be a rotating ad banner i can live with this because prime video since you're paying for it unlike other services, Hulu, <clears throat> uh, you don't get ads during your programming. So a small banner ad, I will deal with. It does not hurt me in any way, shape, or form. I'm gonna pop back up to the top. As you can see, the home is now highlighted. Just so I can come over to the search function to show you what that looks like. It's, again, very rudimentary. We are on the Roku device, so this is search for the Roku. You would have to kind of come in here and hunt and peck what you're looking for. Uh, so if I do this really quickly, and again, like I said, it's not the greatest to do, so you can see it auto-populates over here. This is kind of the customary thing I do to try and find because, well, it's just easy to spell and very quick. So highlighting that, you know, I can come over and say, okay, yes, it's this one or it's this one or it's this one. Selecting the asterisk key on your Roku remote will add it to your watch list. We'll discuss that in a moment. But if I select OK on the Roku remote, it actually will bring me into information about this. And here you can see this one is not actually part of Amazon Prime Video. It is part of the Amazon service, so I can rent this, but it's not Prime Video, which means I can't watch it for free. So just know if you are going to search, you're going to get a mixture of paid and free content. I'm going to go all the way back up. And of course, pressing the back button on my Roku remote brings me back to the last screen that I was on, but I'm gonna come back up here to the top menu and select home. And the reason I'm doing this and did it in that order is because I wanted to show you that there are movies and TV shows that you would have to pay for, but on your home, and what I greatly appreciate is that Amazon stripped out hodgepodging the paid content and non-paid content together they, they totally separated them so here you can see what's next these are things in my watch list to let me know hey maybe you want to watch these things and i was showing my mother-in-law something with that one i don't remember what that was it was it was odd but scrolling down they break things down into 
categories, just like a lot of other services. So it's kind of this weird tiled but film strip service. So here you go, included with Prime, and these are Prime originals. I still stand by, I wish they would make the banner in the upper left-hand corner of each of these thumbnails a little bigger so that I know that these, these are free Prime content that I can be watching. One of my other complaints is I, you know, almost have like an infinite scroll here. There's no way for me to select, show me all the Prime originals in a tiled interface. It's just this continuous film strip scrolling. Is that bad? Yeah, you can be the judge of that. For me, it's a little annoying. But here we go. So included with Prime, movies they think I like, TV shows they think I like, here, specified category, rent new releases, prime video channels. At least these are pushed down the page and not intermingled with the other stuff because these things you will have to pay for or have a subscription for. And then blockbuster movies included with prime, kids and family. You have category. So yes, I can come over and say, show me a bunch of documentaries. And here we go. All the documentaries that are included and then rent or buy, rent or buy. So at least, again, they segment those out into individual categories. So I'm going to go back on my Roku. And the rest of the things on this page are just, again, individual categories that they think you'd like. Here we go. Sports, Black Voices, Prime Cinema. And here we are actually. And here we are again popular prime so they're breaking out a lot of these categories i'm going to select back on my roku remote twice to bring me up to the top coming over to the right we have originals so these are all the amazon originals so that little film strip that i was showing you before well here they break it down into categories within that category so originals original stand-up original kids original series and back again notice the ad strip on the top has changed coming over to tv Prime video, what we're watching, again, all Prime. This is this is all Prime. And before, Amazon did not have their own content. I will admit, they have stepped up their game in things like The Boys or Good Omen. They, they have really embraced making their own stuff, similar to Netflix. The other thing with Amazon that I really appreciate, and we're going to go into The Boys here, and I'm going to select Resume. Now, this will still be on the first episode, so if you haven't seen it, so what I was going to show you is X-ray mode, which is something that Amazon has introduced for their movies and TV shows. I will put a clip in now because apparently they don't like the capture card that I'm using, which I guess DMCA trying to protect that. I get that. Uh, but it is one of the features that is nice about Amazon and their videos is that you have this option for extra information or context about a show, who's in it, things like that. That is pretty cool. And the fact that they don't limit it to just their devices, like the Fire Stick, and they let you do it on devices like the Roku, I, I do appreciate that. Coming along, movies, same thing. It's going to be Prime Movies broken down into categories and then your film strip style of stuff. Back to the top one more time. You've got kids. Again, that's going to break it down, all your kids' offerings for Prime stuff. Because I know I complained in my first video back in 2014 about they need to segregate this stuff a little better. Well, now they really have, and they've broken it down into lots and lots of categories. My stuff is just that. It's your watch list, your movies, your purchases. They keep that all in one place. Here is interesting. This purchases and rental. These are not movies that I got through Amazon Prime. They are movies, however, that I have with my movies anywhere. So it has brought those in that I can watch those in Amazon using their app. So that's that's kind of cool. And then at the top here, the last is our settings. And it's going to show you memberships. Here's your parental controls. All of this is pretty much going to tell you, go to Amazon on the web to actually view this content. So thoughts on Amazon Prime Video in 2020? As a primary viewing option, not quite there yet. I do like all the originals that they have, and they're definitely upping their game, but I don't know if I would pay for it as a standalone service just yet in the infinite amount of services that are coming out. As an add-on for paying for Prime for delivery or the Kindle or the music, yes, there, there's no reason not to have this as part of your cord-cutting arsenal. So if you are like me, and probably like most people these days, and you already have a Prime membership, it is worth revisiting and looking at Amazon Prime Video. 
I have been Wanderer001. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the area below. And as always, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, consider giving it a like as that will help other people find the video as well. If you like what I'm doing here, you can always help fuel the next review by buying me a coffee. Link in the description below. Last but not least, if you want to be notified when I upload a new video, you know what to do.